So, Fran, every time I see you, you just blow my mind. Like, I just don't even know what to say about the conversation we were having before this. But uh, Fran's Kitchen, you have a very interesting story and why it all started. Yeah. Um, do you want to share with that, share that with us? Sure. Um, when I decided to have a baby, um, I was 27 and I got stage four cancer. I went to the doctor and they gave me a year to live. And that wasn't going to happen. So I went home and I brushed up on some books and uh, I followed a diet and I got rid of it in six months. And then I needed to understand what exactly worked so that I could replicate that. And so all of the people in my cancer support group were down to try it. And so we all got better. <laughs> and then Friends Kitchen started. So you basically started to save your own life. And now you're helping other people. Yeah. Their, save their life and that's how i feel when i did it like uh i was working out and i was you know pretty healthy but when i just jumped on your meal plan like it just just to break it down in numbers i literally lost 10 pounds within two weeks i think we jumped into the keto diet when i first started and it was just unbelievable like i had reached a threshold a threshold where i was just wasn't changing anymore uh, i wasn't growing or losing any kind of weight or shredding down and the moment i jumped on it was just like boom instantly and that just tells you that diet is basically Everything, you know, almost everything. Working out has a lot to do with it, but diet is the most important part of it. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. I mean, health is uh, is is just next level. <laughs> um, nutrition plays such a key role into the way that you feel. It's just, yeah, it's the only way. And I think right now health is like a very important topic because obviously what's going on with COVID-19. And I mean, I think it's just important for people to, to just take care of themselves, work out and eat good and go better the way to eat good than through Fran's kitchen, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what, uh, I mean, what, what, what kind of advice, I mean, what, what, what do you recommend to people to do if, if, uh, to help prevent the virus or when, when you start thinking about your health and in, in a bigger picture, um, the state of your, your nervous system, which is responsible for all the adaptations that your body makes, is probably the most important thing to take care of. And so if you're eating a highly processed diet and you're not really eating healthy fats, you're not really maintaining um, a certain level of health with your food, eating a certain amount of antioxidants and phytonutrients in your diet, then your immune system is going to be compromised a lot faster than maybe somebody who's doing those things. And, and there's a very big difference between um, eating right and then having like a shred plan or having like a muscle building plan. We have something called an immunity plan. Our immunity plan basically focuses on changing your numbers. We use a device called a BioStrap and it allows you, it allows us to be able to see your numbers from the day you start to the day you finish our protocol. Our 10 day immune plan increases your immune system performance by more than 30% in the first five days. Wow. So you might have almost doubled your immunity right. <laughs> by the time you're done with your 10-day plan. I've heard, you know, that that once your immunity is gone, it's gone forever. That's not true? No. Oh, okay. You can biohack that. Okay. Yeah, it works. Through Fran's Kitchen. Yes. <laughs> we but actually um, work with that with cancer patients. That's part of you know, recovering you. So like when you think about cancer and you think about what your cells look like, right? Imagine that your cells are the ba most basic form of life in your body. And inside your cells, you have your DNA, your mitochondria, right? When you think about, imagine there's like a, the visual, child visual, right? Imagine there's like a bunch of little keychains around your cell. And you need those nutrients that you absorb in your, in your intestine to get into the cell. But if your diet is void of selenium, magnesium, manganese, all of these micronutrients that you need to support life in that cell, your cell gets sick. So the goal is to be able to understand what your deficiencies are and then biohack your gut to absorb the things that nourish your cells. And when you say biohack, how do you do that? Oh man, there's a process. <laughs> <laughs> That's the um, interesting stuff. Yes. So if we're doing medical diets, I normally get um, actual blood work because at that point in time, you have a medical condition that we don't have a lot of time to fix right. and we don't have a lot of guessing time. So we go off of a test called a spectra cell test and it's called a nutrient density panel. And it really allows me to see what you're not absorbing as opposed to going to a doctor that's just going to prescribe a ton of stuff that you don't need. And then right. you're going to spend a fortune on supplements. Why don't we actually supplement what you're deficient in? Because if we fix what you're deficient in, 
then your body's optimized again. Your body knows what to do if your body has the tools, but it's like you're trying to get water from an empty well. Right. So what about when it comes to someone like uh, that wants to get in shape? So that's much easier, right? Okay. <laughs> um, that's much easier than curing a disease, right? So um, there's different ways. For like women, the plans are much significant than for men. Men's bodies respond so much more faster to diet and exercise because you guys have so much more muscle mass than women. So when you start talking about um, nutrient-dense meals, probably – there's, there's like three or four things that I recommend that you do. The first thing is keep your insulin levels steady throughout the day. Don't have these spikes. That's when you start craving stuff. Insulin like as in sugar? Yes. Oh, okay. So breakfast for you could be something like scrambled eggs, maybe um, like a bulletproof coffee, right? Um, you want to stay away from breads, waffles, carbs, things that really spike you. And then two hours later, you're starving. Yeah. And then lunch should also be fat and protein heavy. You shouldn't really be consuming carbs until the evening. And normally, depending on your level of activity, that determines whether or not you need carbs towards the evening or not. So, I mean, I, th I think a lot of people actually think it's the opposite, right? Like get carbs in the morning and then just don't eat any carbs at night. Yeah, except that doesn't work because when you're trying to calm down your nervous system and you're trying to calm down, bring down your cortisol levels and you're trying to get into a state of deep sleep. So everything you do throughout the day, all your exercise, all your walking, um, all your good dieting, if you're not in, in getting into a deep state of REM, all of that is pointless. My job has no worth if you don't sleep. Carbs allow you to sleep better. Oh. So they, have I didn't you, even know that. Have you ever heard of the itis, right? Yeah, have you ever yeah. heard that? Like, oh my gosh, I ate so many carbs. I just got to go take a nap. You want to do that at night. <laughs> you know what? Now that you put it that way, that is true. Yeah. yeah. In the middle of the day, you eat a lot of bread or whatever. You're just like, oh man, I'm done. Yes. That's so you want to do that towards the night so that you actually have a restful sleep. Um, and then the amount of carbs obviously varies by person. And the type of carbs are super important because a lot of people think all carbs are created equal and they're not. Like in the Latin diet, my mom, man, she loves beans. I love beans, but I can't touch beans. <laughs> yeah. So when you start talking about, okay, well, how do I make sure that I'm absorbing the most out of my food and that I'm getting to my result? The first thing is eliminate lectins, eliminate phytates. Phytates interfere with the way your gut absorbs nutrients. And so when you start thinking about like, well, what's a phytate, Fran? How do I identify that? Well, if you think brown rice is good, it's not. You're better off eating the white rice. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> um, unless you soak your beans overnight, which most people don't. Let's mm -hmm. be real. Yeah. And you'll still have some level of phytate, phytic acid in the beans. Just avoid legumes in general. Avoid quinoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's Stick crazy. with things like um, sweet potato, taro, yucca, um, potatoes, um, plantains those are paleo-ish or just do white rice so, so since we're on the actual like food topic right now like where can people buy the right foods for themselves yes because so, I, I know you i know the food that you prepare you are very selective on where you get yeah. it from so when i shop for my household i love two stores i love natural grocers and i love the farmer's market trader joe's is up there with one of my favorite stores mm -hmm. If you shop there, for the most part, you should do okay. Um, just know how to, what things to source organic. Like, for example, if you're having a raw salad, you probably want to have that organic. Mm -hmm. The avocado, ah, it doesn't matter. There's a peel. You could get rid of it. Not a big deal. I'm not concerned about the avocado. But what, What's in the peel? Well, like... The chemicals? Or? Yeah. Oh. So if they're, if they're spraying stuff, you don't want to eat it. So think about, like, have you ever heard of people saying, oh, have probiotics or mm -hmm. prebiotics because mm -hmm. of your gut bacteria? Well... If you're eating a whole bunch of, like, pesticides, you're killing part of your intestinal flora when you digest it. So a good example is, like, grapes, because grapes, I mean, they spray yeah. it on you actually directly eat it. Yeah. Oh. So, like, try to find things that you're going to eat with the peel as organic as you can. What about, like, meats and things like that? We have a couple of different places where we source meat from. Um, you have a really good organic selection. If you're buying retail, I'm sure you could probably get good organic meat. Um, in Sprouts and Natural Grocers and Costco, you probably get good organics at Trader Joe's because we're talking about retail, right? Not yeah. really you going to buy a whole animal, kill it, because that, that's just not possible for everybody. Right. 
Um, if you're buying retail, like if you're asking me for you, wild. Like boar, venison, bison, ostrich. I want you to stay away from mainstream meat for a little bit. Because all I eat right now is like beef, chicken, fish. Yeah. That's all I eat. Is it wild fish? <laughs> I'm not even sure. <laughs> I'm not even sure. I get I get it at Sam's. So, okay. I mean, for the person, I mean, so is it is it bad for the people that are just buying from the store, like fries? No. I mean, I mean, it's also in the way that you prepare it mm-hmm. um, as best as you can. Like, try to go for organic chicken, um, beef, as long as it's, like, grass-raised, grass-finished. You don't necessarily have to go with organic as long as it hasn't been fed with a whole bunch of grains, right? Um, Fish, wild fish is really good. Better than farm-raised in many cases. Um, Let me think what else. Turkey, you could probably get pasture-raised turkey at Sprouts very easily. Right. Um... If you're asking me um, how you prepare it, that's a different story. So, like, sometimes it's not about what you eat. Well, it is about what you eat. Sometimes it's about how you prepare it, too. So there should only be three oils in your house to cook with, (laughs) really. Um, Avocado oil, olive oil, coconut oil. Everything else should not exist in your world. If you're frying something, you better fry it in avocado oil. It interferes with your gut. It messes with your gut. It makes you not absorb your food. It actually creates um, what we call intestinal permeability. So a lot of people that have IBS don't feel good after they eat. They end up feeling like, ah, I'm bloated. I'm gassy. I don't know what's going on. Stay away from refined oils in general. They're not good for you. Companies created them because they want to mass sell to you. Ultimately, nobody cares about your health more than you. Buy the good stuff. So what would you say to someone, you know, now that you said about the good stuff, like they're like, well, you know, yeah, you could buy avocado and all those things, but those are probably more expensive. Yeah. I mean, you can pay the farmer. You could pay the pharmacist. I mean, it's up to you who you want to pay, <laughs> you know. Pay the uh, farmer, pay the pharmacist. Yeah. Okay. You know. True. So and then I going to uh, back to uh, preparing food. I mean, it's also important that you prepare because the way the reason I fell in love with your food is because I was meal prepping on my own before. But it was like, you know, the same thing in the morning. Uh, sausage and eggs in the morning, uh, chicken for lunch, beef for dinner. And then it was the same thing for seven days straight. And I was like, oh, my God, I got so tired of it. You, when you prepare your meals, it's like I wasn't even eating the same meal for like two or three months. Yeah. But, oh, yeah, I remember this meal. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that obviously made it a lot easier to me because I was just able to get up in the morning, stick everything in my six-pack cooler, take it to work, and then pop it in the microwave. And I was good. I wasn't eating the same thing for a couple months. Yeah. So you're very, very, um, how, how do you plan that? I mean. So we have menus that we draw out for weeks at a time. And then um, we go by people's favorites. And then if there's some, if we get feedback from surveys of things people don't like, then we take it out or we change it. And then we wait till the next survey to see if we have to take it yeah. out. Um, it's really like a work in progress. When you're prepping for yourself, it's very easy to create flavor into this me- into the meal. So let's say you're making chicken, right? And you season it with your regular, like, sofrito, right? You can cook part of it that way. And then the other part, you could just add pineapple. And now you have pineapple chicken and regular chicken. You know what I mean? It doesn't take a lot to change it up um, if you know how to create the foundation um, for your spices. Stay away from, like I said, things that cause inflammation. Tomato sauce, spicy food. We love spicy food. I mean, you know. Yeah. But it's not good for your gut. So if you're actually trying to fix your digestive tract, then give it a, a real break. Give it a chance to actually recover. And then you can include those things later on down the road. It probably takes like six to eight weeks to do an elimination diet. And then you start reincorporating it back slowly. When I started my keto diet, like what, what was the process for me? And what were, what was going on in your mind? Because I know it took us, I want to say, I was always a, kind of a bigger guy and I was working out really, really hard. And uh, the first couple, I would say the first couple of months, I was actually pretty hungry. And yeah. I was like, Fran, I was like, I need more food. I need more food. You know, um, so remember, we we didn't always do keto with you. So in, at first we did um, we did a paleo diet with you. Was it? And then okay. we went to a shred because you wanted to have a six pack. And then you said, you know what? I have this, but I, I want to gain muscle mass. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's when we put you on a gainer plan. <laughs> yeah. That's when I was like, OK, I'm not hungry. No more. Yes. So. so your workouts impact the amount of calories that you take and the amount of calories that you burn. What they teach you historically when people do diets and stuff is if you want to lose weight, just cut, 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 cut. That doesn't make sense when you think about it because 
do you stop? Do you think about breathing? No. Don't you think that takes effort from your body to do? Yeah. Do you think about your heart beating or your blood circulating and right? All of those things require calories. That's what you call your resting metabolic rate. Add activity to that. Add your sleep. Add your the calories that it takes your body to do repairs at night. You need to give your body enough calories to do the job and enough calories to say, okay, I could let go of the bad because she's constantly in a constant state or he in a constant state of nutrition, right? And that's when you get the results that you want. Like, for example, we do this a lot with fighters. Um, you know, Henry. Henry comes to me. He's like, hey, Fran, I need to shred 40 pounds in two months. Great. He can shred it like that. But the goal is not for him to shred the weight. The goal is for him to maintain a certain level of health and performance and muscle mass. Right during that time so that he doesn't lose strength, power, um, or any level of conditioning, right? Or even just like uh, just mental discouragement. Clarity. Right? Yeah. So yeah. all of those, because you have to think about reaction times. You have to think about cognition. You have to think about memory. You have to think about response times. All of those things are affected by nutrition. So, and then that's pretty much what Henry does. I mean, like, what you guys are kind of doing behind the scenes is you guys are breaking it down to like a science. Yeah. Um, I mean, you guys are even measuring yeah. everything, <laughs> Yes. even his workouts. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about the bio strap? Yeah. So um, one of the easiest way for us to measure our client's health is to see you as a whole person. We don't want to compare you to anybody else. You're you. You're your own person. We can only improve based on what your body can give us. So we have to measure how you're coming along in different areas. So health, if we're being honest, it doesn't matter if you have a six pack and you're full of muscles, if you're going to die at 50, are you really healthy? Right. So health should really be measured by longevity. And this is a common mistake that people make. People think that, oh, if I look like that bodybuilder girl, then I must be healthy. When really internally, she could be a hot mess, right? right. So for us, our goal is to be able to measure the things that matter. So we measure heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is linked to what we call um, your autonomic nervous system. Your autonomic nervous system controls all of the functions your body does. So when you think about recovery, adaptations, all of those things affect your immune system. And there's tons of articles on this. You guys can read it. So our job is to raise your HRV and affect your immune system response over the course of the immunity plan. So if you're sick and you have an immune compromised system, we're measuring those things. I can measure pulmonary function, the amount of oxygen saturation in your body. I can measure um, the level of activity that you have. I can measure how you sleep. I can measure how much deep sleep you have. I can measure how much light sleep you have. I can measure your rate of recovery. Wow. I know whether the next day you're ready to um, be able to do strength or if you should be doing more of like conditioning and then the system tells you that as well or if hey just take it easy today how, how, did, <laughs> how did he even come up with this what's the um, what's the so kevin um is a neuroscientist that we work with and neuroforce one he's a scientist he's a, scientist. a brilliant brilliant scientist and these guys just understand how to be able to get perform the most out of performance our job is to make sure that the nutrition pushes the numbers in a certain direction. Their job is to make sure that your physique meets the demands of the performance and, and the nutrition plans that we create. Right. And so we're able to do that. So in a, in a, in a, in a short uh, sense, it's like so that you're not overworking yourself. Yes, and then not, or maybe underworking. Not, or maybe, yeah, so like maybe overwork, overworking yourself and not feeding yourself enough. Yeah. So it's like the right balance so you get the most out of everything. Yeah. I, and I can I can kind of uh, attest for just from what I've seen like with Henry. I mean, like, you know, when I, I noticed a difference in him in his fights uh, when he started doing the whole new. Obviously, once he, once he was doing your your uh, your meal plans, he a whole different Henry. But then when he started adding the near force and the science to it, I was just like, whoa, dude. Like, We never lost a belt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just he was he went in there and started killing people. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, uh, you could just see what when he the I think it was the fight with the um, Mighty Mouse. He was just walked in there. And he was just like, boom. Like, dude, did you, you just did you just cut away? Because you don't even look like it. You know, it looked like the a bigger, biggest Henry I've ever seen in my life. And we've actually made it easy. So um, we have two ways of, of helping our clients. We can either make the meals for you or we could prescribe a custom nutrition plan for you. And then you cook it out home wow. and then we monitor you over the course of a few weeks and every single day you should be making progress and the progress should show so like what i always tell people is put away the scale take a before picture and then every week do progress pics if you're properly building muscle muscle weighs more than fat right 
So you're going to look lean. I mean, crazy lean. Maybe you only lost 20 pounds, but those 20 pounds make a significant difference as you put on seven pounds of lean muscle mass. You know what I right. mean? So did you really lose 20 or did you lose 27? Does that make sense? It, it really changes the dynamic of how you measure health. And then it's also, how do you feel in the morning? You know, how did you sleep? How do you feel when you work out? How's your mood? So when you start talking about important things like serotonin, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm constantly depressed. I can't remember anything. I have uh, cognition issues. I have ADD. I have a lot of these things are derived from nutrition. And when you fix the gut and you start actually producing serotonin in your gut, not just your brain, you're a different person. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I agree with that. A hundred percent. I actually, uh, when I started working out and eating better, I was just, before I was having trouble uh, waking up in the morning. And once I changed my health up, it was like, I was up at 7 a.m. Even if I had just gone to bed at 12 o'clock at night, I was up, ready to go. And I was just so much more productive. I was thinking clear, making better decisions. I started becoming more successful. Um, so I don't think people realize that, like, it's not just that, like just about your looking good. It's about also how you feel and the way it's going to change your life and basically help you become a better person. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and I've noticed that because I went from, you know, what I was before to just being tip top 100 percent shape in shape to kind of where I'm at now. I'm still in good, healthy shape. But I noticed the difference between when I had the eight pack and I was just 100 percent running like a machine to now. You know, it's it, it actually is a little bit harder for me to wake up early in the morning, you know, and obviously eating the different types of food and also including alcohol again in my life. You know what I mean? That just threw everything out of whack. So that's why we were talking before is why I'm going to start this uh, 30 day challenge here in about a few days and uh, why I need your help again. Yeah. Well, we got gotcha. you. So um, for your clients and you. Um, so for you, what we're going to do is we're going to um, basically take you to like a reverse carb load. Okay. Um, we're going to start off your days with a keto diet. And then as the night gets in, we're going to start, you know, doing what we would call like a reverse carb load. And then um, eventually after your first few days, we'll start including intermittent fasting oh, man, that's tough. through your day. Um, and you should see a difference immediately. So you'll take your picture and then we'll start posting every week progress pictures. Okay. Um, if your clients want to follow along, we could do some kind of a, you know, discounted promotion where we'll write up a prescription meal plan for them to Sweet. follow. And then they can go along their journey having the same results as you. Sweet. I'm excited. Yeah. I, ha I haven't seen my abs in like two years. <laughs> <laughs> and I've also done the one where like I haven't had any carbs whatsoever. Yeah, and just, no. Oh my God. Like, we don't want to do that. Especially if you're going to be if you're going to be working out hard and we're going to be doing stuff with like yeah. weightlifting and we're going to go hard. You can't build muscle without carbs. Right. It doesn't yeah. work for men. Keto for men is very different than keto for women. And for you, our goal is to make sure your insulin levels are steady throughout the day. You have a spike at night. That spike brings down all your hormones. And then think about bodybuilders. That's how they do it. There's a science behind things. And, and not everything works for everybody. Some people might need to be on an anti-inflammatory diet because their, their situation is very different than yours, right? Mm -hmm. Some people might have to be full keto because maybe they have thyroid issues. They can't metabolize carbohydrates the same way, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody's a little bit different. But for you, yeah. We got this. So, I mean, for me, I feel like I can do this in 30 days. But for, you know, like, say, I've, I've seen a lot of people say, hey, I'm going to change my diet. I'm going to start working out. And then a weekend, they give up. Um, could that be because maybe they're just rushing into it too fast to where they shock their body and they freak themselves out? Or I also think it's, like, understanding expectations. So, like, in, in the ceiling of your mouth, you have something called an umami. Umami allows you to be able to determine sweet from salty, from savory, right? Mm -hmm. When you've been eating a diet that is highly processed, you have to understand a lot of these companies have studied how to affect the umami in your mouth so you continue to buy their product. I'll give you a perfect example. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A sauce. <laughs> Chick-fil-A sauce is MSG. You don't know why you love it. You just know that when you go there, you order it. Right. Right? What's so good about it? So what it does is you eat it and you're hungry very shortly after you yeah. digest it so fast, like you feel like you didn't eat it. It's not that you didn't eat it. It's that it's affecting a part of your brain that's making you want to consume more because what is company's jobs to make you want to buy more food? More profit. Once you eliminate, you have to go through a detox period. When you're going into a meal plan, you have to understand that it's going to take you about three weeks to fully stop craving stuff that you were eating regularly 
But it's really mind over matter. Right. Because once your body starts feeling well, if you're properly listening to your body, like, wow, let me keep a journal. How did I sleep last night? How did I feel today? Am I, am I happier? Yeah. Am I in a better mood? Yeah. Am I less irritable? Am I less angry? Am I less snappy? Do I have less road rage? All of these things get affected by the serotonin in your gut. But the only way we get rid of, you know, the junk is by cleaning it up. And the mm. only and I can't clean it up if you keep eating it. Does right. that make sense? Yeah. And uh, I, it's definitely like now that you bring it up, I do remember like struggling the first couple of weeks. Like, oh, my God, I want to just eat this and I want to go eat a mm. cheeseburger or whatever it might be. Uh, and then a couple months into it, it was just like, oh, I can't even think about eating that stuff because it just makes me want to vomit. Yeah. It just, makes you sick afterwards. Yeah. Because you actually acquire your, your taste buds back. And then you're like, wow, really? I thought yeah. this was friggin' fabulous. And then just having my cheat days on, like, on, you know, when I had a cheat day, I would go eat, you know, whatever restaurant and get a cheeseburger. And then afterwards, I'd be like, oh, my God, I can't move for, like, three hours. I just felt terrible. And then, honestly, I would just regret it even having a cheat day. And I can't wait to go back tomorrow to eating eating <laughs> France food again, you know? Yeah. Um. So, yeah, because, uh, I, you know, I, I hear this all the time. Even when I was doing it, people were like, I need your help. I want to do this. How do I do it? How do I do it? I'm just like... People would just jump into it too fast and then just didn't really know what they were doing. They didn't understand the science behind eating right and actually working out. And then two weeks into it, they were just probably in a worse position than they first started. And uh, I mean, fortunately, I was fortunate to meet people like you and also uh, some friends that helped me in working out. And it was just, I got it. I got it nailed down and I'm ready to do this again. <laughs> I'm ready to see my six pack again in 30 days. So. It's actually the day that the day before my birthday, we're going to pick the winner. And I'm going to use that to help people also to get in shape, but also as a way to mo motivate myself because it's so hard right now to, uh, you know, just try to work out every single day and not be able to go to the gym. Um, so I'm going to do it at home and I'm yeah. going to do it with some good food and I'm going to use everybody around me to help motivate me. So I can give you a little, a little routine. I'll text it to you later. It. Yeah. That's, okay. that's our secret. We can't share yeah. that with nobody. Yeah. So any, anything else that maybe you want to talk about France Kitchen so people know? Um, um, absolutely. So we are the only kitchen in the Valley that actually has a COVID protocol. Um, it's been studied with Mayo. It's being studied with um, the DOD. Um, we also have uh, BioStrap has been part of multiple COVID studies right now. Um, even though we can't prevent or say that we cure any of this, there's a certain um, data that backs up how your how your body recovers and how you're able to keep your immunity levels at a certain place. Um, so we do have immune protocols to kind of help boost you. I highly suggest for everybody to start doing boosters now before the fall um, and just keep yourself as healthy as you can. It's summer. Um, let's just make sure everybody's in good health for winter. And that's just the honestly the best way to, to keep, keep yourself safe from the virus, right? I mean, yeah. I mean... I, I think that, that everybody has everybody has a different level of risk. Like for me, I'm a cancer survivor, so my risk level might be higher than somebody who never had cancer, right? So for me, I follow specific things that I do myself every day. Um, like I do bone broth fasting every morning. And that's a big thing uh, for me. Um, the second part is um, I, I have like an immunity protocol that I follow if I'm like out and about. Um, I'll get home after today's meeting and I'll be nebulizing, nebulizing like um, silver and NSTAT and before I even have contact with my family. Like I go through a process of sanitizing things, not just for my sake, but for the people that work for me right. and the clients that we prep for because everybody we prep for is highly immune compromised. The nebulizer, can you talk about what that is? So you know how when you have asthma, they give mm -hmm. you a nebulizer to mm -hmm. nebulize things to keep your asthma down. So I nebulize um, certain things. So I take... You're using silver? Yeah. What does the silver, silver do? So the silver helps like kind of imagine like sanitation for your lungs. Gotcha. That's kind of the concept, right? So I use silver and stat and then um, internally I take um, quercetin and then I take artemisinin and then I take vitamin D. So you basically don't have immunity if you don't have vitamin D. Even though we live in Arizona, there's a ton of people with vitamin D deficiencies. Your immune cells are not activated unless you have vitamin D. So you can't ask your body to draw from an empty well. So I take 30,000 IUs of vitamin D twice a week. And because I already have a vitamin D deficiency anyways. Right. So that's how I keep up with my with my life. And then I have like tons of adaptogens that I take regularly um, to basically keep 
my nervous system and immune function high. And especially with the vitamin D, because we're stuck at home right now. Yeah. We can't even go outside. Yeah. Go to your yard, garden. Yeah. <laughs> Stay out there. You know, <laughs> it's important. <laughs> Where can they uh, uh, find you, get a hold of you if uh, they want to buy a meal plan? Yeah. So um, Fran's Kitchen, AZ, like Arizona.com. And um, our number is uh, 602-354-6293. Cool. And I'll be doing, uh, I'll be jumping into Fran's Kitchen again. So you guys can follow me and see how, uh, and actually see the proof of how it works. Yeah. And uh, for your clients, we'll offer them an online meal plan um, if they want to follow it with you. And they can reach out to us and we'll get it into their hands. Cool. One more thing I just thought about this. This is kind of like on the topic, but not really. Uh, the whole strawberry thing. So uh, <laughs> we're having this discussion. He doesn't care. I care. I stopped eating strawberries because I saw this video on Facebook. Uh, my niece actually showed me what the with the strawberries they put them in a bowl of, of water and salt and these bugs start to come out of it. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Well, um, and it, and it, and is it bad? Okay, it, it, so let's start with that. You spend time overseas, right? Yes. <laughs> Have you noticed that food tastes different? Mm -hmm. What? Why do you think that is? Because of the chemicals. And because of the soil. When your bugs like your food, that's not necessarily a bad thing, okay? You have bugs that live inside you, whether you like it or not. <laughs> if you notice, um, part of like, and, and I, I, I only notice this because it's not common here and it's common overseas. Uh -huh. um, people don't do antiparasitics here, ever. Here? In America, they don't. It's not a common practice. In every other country in the world, once a year, people are doing this for everybody in the household. And that's like, what, like a self-treatment? Yeah. Take a couple for a few days, make sure whatever's there is dead and out, right? We don't do that here. You don't. Ever. ever. So you have all this stuff living there. So when, when if, if your concern is a strawberry, I would highly recommend... That you don't touch meat or processed meats. I brought that up. I said that too. Um, because there was a video about, I think it was like pork and Coca-Cola too. Have you seen I, this? That's exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. So if if we're really if we're really trying to get into this, as long as you're alive, you will have bugs inside of you. <sighs> don't tell me that. This is life. This is why you rot. This is why you're in a coffin. Okay. Man. So um and I'm not saying that that it's bad, but like when we talk about probiotics and prebiotics and, and gut flora, you have like good bacteria living in your stomach that helps you break down your food. Uh -huh. Bacteria also is responsible for helping you with serotonin. Like what it's different. Right. So like, for example, going back to the strawberry topic, I grow strawberries. Mm -hmm. I've never had any issues with my own. <laughs> <laughs> um I grow my own food, though. Um, I've not tried the experiment. I'm sure that with any fruit, whether it's a strawberry or not, there's some level of bugs. I mean, that's just part of farming. The animals got to eat, too. Yeah. You know? So don't be totally grossed out by them if it's going to make you eliminate them. Just if you're going to pick something else that's red, make sure you're eating, like, a raspberry or something, right? But berries have bugs, so do other... What, what about pineapples? They're good. I mean, everything's good. Pineapple's great <laughs> for inflammation. You know, like everything has a purpose. Yeah. All I would say is wash your veggies really good. Uh -huh. And that's it. And then do the, maybe once a year, do the cleaning, right? Yes. What, how do we do that? Um, I can't tell you this live. Okay. <laughs> but I can give you, because you go to Rocky Point, uh -huh. Um this is very common over there. You can get it like you literally cross the border and you can say, hey, I want to do some antiparasitics for the next few days. Can you give me some stuff? And they'll recommend at the pharmacy things that you can do. This is very common and you'll just do it. But if you're doing it, you either A, want to do it by yourself or B, with everybody else in the household because otherwise you catch what they have. They didn't do. Oh, man. Imagine imagine the ones that you've eaten in your sleep. <laughs> oh, I know. I could just imagine bugs and like spiders. Oh, God, don't even get me started. I hate spiders. Yeah. As long as there's no spiders in fruits or foods, I think we're okay. I mean, where do you think they live? Have you not <sighs> seen the spiders this. in the bananas? Don't tell me this. I love bananas. Yeah, like, well, in Costa Rica, I remember a long time ago, past life, I did an internship working for a company, and they would bring fruit from Costa Rica 
bring it to a factory, then they would gas the fruit to ripen it, banana specifically. And they would tell you like, don't go in until the next day once the spray is there. And I was like, why? Because there is something called a something something spider from Costa Rica that hides in the bananas. And they're apparently poisonous. Are they are they big? Massive. Oh my God. I'm gonna go shower after this. Okay. <laughs> Think about it this way. If it comes from the ground and it comes from the soil, I would rather you eat a strawberry with a bug than eat something processed. It is much healthier for you, whether you like it or not. I mean, there's people that eat bugs for a living. I mean, how many people I, in Brazil they even fry like worms and stuff? Yeah. Like I I know that I guess you get a little bit of fruit with the plus some, pro- a little protein, some there. protein in there. <laughs> I was hoping that uh you would tell me just to stop eating strawberries, but no. <laughs> just watch it. Really well. Oh man. Anything else, Brad? No, yeah. I think we're good. This is super informative. Um if you guys want to you know find out more about Fran's Kitchen, of course you guys got our website. Um let me know if you guys want to participate in this dad bot challenge, fellas. Uh, open to dads or non-dads. We start July 13th this Monday and uh, it goes all the way to August 11th. So 30 day challenge, the biggest transformation wins and uh, I'm going to get Fran's help. If you guys want to get her help, let us know. Subscribe to the channel and also please share the link. Thank you guys for watching.